What's going on, everybody? This is Tanner from TamanBaseballFan.com. It is Saturday afternoon. This Texas weather is killing me. Uh, it's crazy. It's like a bipolar. I mean, we're probably close to 90 degrees uh, today. <laughs> so I think we're supposed to be getting 60s and 70s this next week. We'll see. Um, you never know. The weatherman is always a constant liar, and I think uh, Texas makes a liar out of him. But that's okay. Thankful to... Uh, have a neighborhood to be able to walk around in and feel safe so and also to be able to talk to you on this podcast now normally i do these at night uh if i mix up a little bit might be a little shorter this time i don't know um but i want to tell you a little bit about what i was talking about or what i was thinking about to be able to you know kind of talk to you uh is how can we figure out what to collect and this question comes up quite a bit and uh, so it's going to also, the answer is going to be different for each person. So I'll kind of give you a few uh, tips and tricks that I've learned because my uh, collection itself has uh, been uh, transformed many, many times in several different directions. So I think I have enough knowledge to be able to uh, teach a few folks out there some information. Apologize for the traffic. Uh, this is completely off the cuff. And... Uh, you know, so as always, my standard disclaimer, it's going to be rough and raw and you're going to hear me mess up uh, talking and sometimes that might not even make sense. <laughs> and uh, so I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully this will be at least good background noise for you. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I uh, start off with um, the number one important thing when figuring out what you really like is to kind of determine uh, what you personally like and uh, kind of split that from what you like just because everybody else thinks it's cool. And uh, that's probably number one thing. I think that uh, that little tidbit of information has been amplified ever since the advent of the internet uh, for collectors because a big part of our collection, or of our collecting, uh, like it or not, is sharing our collections with everybody else and talking to them. You know, so you, at any given time, I'm sure you probably can say that you have some pictures of uh, of your collection on your phone, maybe some baseball cards or or whatever. That's just kind of how we roll nowadays. And uh, you know, you're ready to send pictures through your private message, DM on Twitter, or texting each other, showing your friends. That's kind of our version of uh, of getting together at the corner on the 80s and 90s and uh, showing each other what we picked up at the uh, baseball card store. So. Uh, you know, it's, nothing's really changed. Uh, it's just uh, just different ways of, uh, of doing things. So, uh, thing is, is because we're sharing these online now, uh, we obviously really like and appreciate and really crave the, uh, the adoration from everybody else when you pick up a card. Uh, so, you know, for instance, I show, let's say I show a, uh, I don't know, uh, one of one Canseco shiny whatever. I post on Twitter and you know, I get like say 50 or 100 likes. It's uh, you know, it feels good. Or a couple comments, man, that's awesome. Oh, it's beautiful. I wish I had that. And you know, look, don't don't fool yourself. You do care about what people think. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of people who say, oh, I don't care what they what they think whenever I post something, I just want to post it. Ah, no, no, no. You uh, it feels good getting compliments. That's just how we're wired as human beings. And that's okay. It's okay to admit that you like uh, adoration and compliments from other, from other people. So the problem is, is uh, some people could turn the corner and say, well, do I really like these cards or do I just like them because of uh, the feedback that I get from them? And uh, I've fallen into that trap sometimes as well. And, uh, you know, to an extent, it can be unavoidable, and we just don't know. Uh, and we won't really know until after the feedback has died down, and then at the end it's just us and whatever cards we picked up in our rooms. And uh, we got to take a long, hard look at them and say, do I really like this card? I mean, do I love it, or is it just something that's cool because everybody else thinks it's really neat? Um, you know, like I said, I've fallen into this trap as well, and so... The best way to go about um, about doing this and uh, is uh, you know go ahead and make your purchases um, if you don't know if it's uh, something that you love versus 
uh, you want to pick up just because it's hot um, is make sure that you purchase it right. So buy it right. And uh, I'll give you a kind of an example of, uh, uh, let's see, where can I go with this? Well, I'll give you an example with a, uh, a Shane Bieber card. Think of Shane Bieber from 2019 Stadium Club. About a month or so ago, a huge commotion was made uh, because uh, on the back, uh, whether it was uh, on purpose or on accident, Tops made mention of Justin Bieber in the back of the card <laughs> instead of Shane Bieber. Uh, I don't know if Tops did it on purpose or not or on accident, but uh, either way, it was out there and it was noticed. And right when it got national exposure, dozens of them magically showed up on eBay being like super rare, <laughs> which is kind of funny because nowadays there's rare cards and you don't see my air quotes um, when I'm saying this uh, all over the place. You could see a uh, Cal Ripken Jr., Nolan Ryan, uh, Gary Carter, Albert Pujols, Mark McGuire, Will Clark, any of these guys, Frank Thomas, Griffey, Trout, the list goes on and on. They have all kinds of cards that are numbered to five or 10 or 15 or 20, 25. And uh, these cards a lot of times will not go for like crazy money. Some will, of course, like Trout and Jeter might and that sort of thing. But there are many that won't. Um, and uh, the reason why is because the market has been saturated with these quote unquote rare cards. Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, 2019, we'll probably see um, you know, as many as 10, 20, 30 cards that are number to five of one specific player, um, which kind of crazy, but that's just how collecting goes right now. And that's fine. But the funny part about it is, uh, we had, um, uh, for Shane Bieber, we had dozens and dozens and dozens of cards available on eBay at the same time. Yet for some reason, nobody quite understood, uh, that, uh, the card was not in fact rare not even looking at eBay seeing the several dozen several dozen of them for sale <laughs> so they kept selling for you know uh, 10 20 30 dollars some of them got to be between 100 and 200 dollars and it was just really really nutty so I can almost guarantee you uh, and by the way uh, in case you didn't know already it was not a rare card it was never corrected so literally every Shane Bieber card out there has Justin, uh, Justin's name on the back. Um, so it's uh, ultimately it's just a five cent card. So uh, you know that's one thing that you definitely want to avoid is uh, getting caught up into the hype game on some of these cards. Because guess what happens when you pick up a card like that for twenty five dollars and it dies down and nobody cares about that card anymore and it sells for five or ten cents. You know that's a uh, not going to feel too good because you have a card that's really kind of worthless and you don't know what to do with. So buy right. Make sure that, you know, you're not part of, uh, you know, wanting to pick up something just because of the hype machine. And, uh, you know, if you purchase something, uh, you know, you certainly want to make sure that uh, um, other sales uh, really kind of coincide with, uh, with, uh, with what you might possibly pick up uh, something for. And also, uh, you know, after a while, it's a great learning opportunity to, you know, kind of cast your net wide, pick up some things as long as you have the education on what they actually sell for. And uh, that way you can actually sell them for a little bit of money down the road instead, you know, for, with some uh, extra cash in your pocket uh, by way of profit. So that's kind of, a, kind of a fun way to do it. And I'll give you an example with my own vintage collection. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been working on a pre-war uh, graded collection. And so I just, gosh, I adore those cards. Love all the 19th century cards and, and everything. So a couple of the cards I picked up were uh, ATA7 Old Judge Harry Stovey. Um, you probably don't know who this player is. Harry Stovey uh, played for the Philadelphia um, athletics, I think it was uh, back then, or Quakers, I don't remember uh, which one, but um, and maybe some other teams as well, but he was the first player, first baseball player to hit 100 home runs. Pretty cool, pretty cool. He actually changed his name because he didn't want his family to know that he was playing baseball. <laughs> he was embarrassed, so like, what a crazy, uh, 
uh, difference in time that we live in that people are, were embarrassed because it was more of a the, the game was completely different back then and uh, a bunch of uh, ruffians would play back then I guess is what they would call them <laughs> so you know pretty cool pretty cool card uh, and a neat uh, neat little stat uh, that had to do with him uh, hitting, hitting 100 home runs and be the first to do so Another one is an 1887 old judge uh, sliding Billy Hamilton. Now, the name Billy Hamilton might mean something completely different to you all. You probably think of uh, the, the uh, Reds player who steals all kinds of bases. I think he plays for the Reds. Um, but sliding Billy Hamilton was actually uh, the original Ricky Henderson. Uh, he was number three. He is number three on the all-time stolen base list, if I remember correctly. Very brash, very cocky. I don't know if he talked about himself in third person like Ricky Henderson did. <laughs> but a uh, uh, very colorful uh, colorful character. But um, I uh, um, I picked up an old Judge card of his. And after a while, you know, I, I realized, you know, this doesn't really do much for me. I want to stick with, like, Cap Anson, King Kelly, maybe Jack Glasscock for... Uh, the uh, the good one card because I just adore that card. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful card. But uh, uh, anyways, for one reason or another, the Stovey and the Hamilton didn't really make the cut for what I'm trying to do with my personal collection. Now, because I was patient, um, I was able to make a little bit of money off of it. On top of uh, being able to sell for a very affordable price to the people that picked them up. So I'm happy and they're happy. Uh, I have... Uh, more cash in my pocket to be able to put toward uh, some cards that truly mean something to me as opposed to just some cool cards that are, you know, neat but probably mean more to somebody else. So, uh, one way to go about uh, really educating yourself uh, as far as pricing goes um, is, uh, you know, you want to go to eBay, number one, see how much people are selling the cards for that you're interested in, and number two, Go to cardsnoop.com. I feel like I've referenced that website like almost every podcast. I promise I'm not affiliated with them, but it's just a it's a very good uh, a very good utility. Um, but you can go there and you can uh, figure out what cards have actually sold for. So, for example, you might have, uh, and I don't think you do. I don't think there's any Harry Stovies out there for sale right now. But you might find ten of them for sale for eight hundred dollars. Okay, well, you, know, you might be tempted in picking one up for $800 if you're going based on that. Well, the problem ha the problem can be when you figure out that they only sell for $600. So what you want to do is, armed with that information, buy one for $600 um, or you know less if you can, which, by the way, you won't be able to figure out or won't be able to <laughs> buy one for, uh, for less than $600, most likely, unless it's just like a terribly beat-up card. Uh, but anyway, so uh, because of that, just as an example for me, uh, for the Harry Stovey, uh, I knew the pricing. I was able to pick up one for a good price and sold it after I determined that it wasn't for my collection and uh, had a little bit of cash in my pocket for profit. So good way of going. It's definitely a good way of going. And so the more you do that, the more knowledge you pick up on your own to see how much cards sell for in the niche that you're interested in. So... Um, those are just a couple of thoughts I have. Let me see if I can think of uh, think of anything else. Um, I guess one thing we could do also is we can go through uh, certain fun collection I, collecting ideas. Uh, for me, obviously, the thing I'm most well known for uh, was uh, collecting Jose Canseco, and I had a goal of uh, trying to pick up one of every single card of his, which. Um, Got pretty darn close. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. It was neat because it was a mission that I think that the uh, community appreciated and and uh, helped me out on tremendously. Um, but after I sold out, I came back and said, "Okay, how do I really want to collect?" I still love Consego cards, but what does that mean for you know doing this again? So what I did was I figured out a uh, number of cards that I really, really, really loved and. Uh, that were either expensive or not, and targeted those. So that might have included, uh, you know, maybe some of the uh, 
90s refractors, but not all of them, and only centered ones, and not ones with print lines. Um, yeah, I was interested in the, uh, let's see if I can think of anything here. Uh, like the uh, 97 Pinnacle totally certified platinum cards. I wanted the gold, didn't really care much about the red or blue. Um, same thing goes for the new rainbow. So you know, if you're a collector of cards from the past, like, uh, I want to say 10 years or so, you know that like there's all kinds of rainbow uh, parallels for almost every card. So you have uh, like a Topps Tribute card, for example, or Triple Threads. You might have uh, the same card that's serial numbered five, 10 different times. For me personally, I'm not really interested in doing that. So uh, I'll give you an example also for uh, Stadium Club. So 2018 Stadium Club, beautiful card. Um, they have, and I'm not even gonna be able to remember how many there, there are total uh, but I know there's the base card, the chrome, uh, the base autograph, the chrome autograph, uh, the orange foil, black foil, sepia, black and white, uh, rainbow I-25 auto, uh, refractor auto, gold mint refractor, super refractor, super refractor auto. So there's all kinds of different versions uh, that you can take a look at. Um, so for me, uh, you know, this time a couple years ago, I, I would have said, must have all <laughs> and uh, you know I'm not that way anymore so I decided to target a uh, base regular a base chrome so you know we're talking like 50 cent cards if that uh, refractor a base refractor um, and a gold mint refractor so I bypassed all the autographs all the other variations I just stuck with the ones that I liked and that's those are the cards that fill my current collection um, which is uh has made me wildly happy because it doesn't make me want to uh, pick up anything and everything just for completion's sake. And I understand, I get it. You might be different. You might uh, be wrapped up in the in the uh, completionist uh, mindset, and that's fine. Um, just you know, obviously, be careful with uh, your finances. Be and realize number one that you will not be able to uh, pick up everything that they make uh, unless you're independently wealthy. And uh, I'll say, uh, you know, they, uh, it can be a black hole. It really can, you know, because you never want to put yourself at the mercy of the card makers as far as what they, what they put out. And a lot of times nowadays, the card companies, they'll have a, uh, uh, you know, different variations, but they'll also do proofs of those variations. So, uh, or of this parallel. So let's say there's one card company that creates like, uh, sometimes four or five different one of ones. You have like the the red one of one, the gold one of one, purple one of one, black one of one, super fracture one of one, and then later on uh, they'll do a, a a version of each one of those also that are blank backs or something, and they'll label them as one of ones also. So kind of a little bit misleading, maybe not misleading, but you know just need to understand that just because it says one of one doesn't mean it's the only one of one, uh, even in the same set. Which uh, for me I didn't really didn't really like how that would go. So anyways, as far as uh, um, another collecting avenue that I went was for uh, um, unopened wax boxes of uh, uh, from the 1980s for the most part. And this is actually a good example uh, that I can tell you about as well. So the way I started out is I thought I would get uh, a sealed wax box from every year in every card company from 1980, which is when I was born, until like 1993 or so when I stopped. So along the way, I started thinking, man, these rack pack boxes are cool. You know, it's even cooler than cello boxes. So, and uh, you know, leaf and opichi. So instead of just being 80 tops wax, 81 tops Donnerson Fleer wax, all the way through to 88, and then you had score, 89 you had upper deck, and I you had leaf, and 91 you add, uh, um, stadium club it got really really hairy really quick so I ended up buying some cello boxes rack boxes and ended up picking up some uh, 93 boxes like SP and finest I mean these are these are some high dollar items and uh, after a while I realized you know I don't really want to go this way um, you know I want to go ahead and just focus on the wax and maybe just for the 80s and maybe up to 92 because really that was kind of the heart of my collecting 
so I sold the cello boxes and the rack boxes and uh, uh, the leafs and opeaches. I might have an 85 leaf box um, still that's an open, I don't, re I don't recall. But uh, another thing is, is I wanted to make sure that all of my boxes were FASC and that stands for from a sealed case and authenticated by the baseball card exchange. So that was a big, big deal to me. And I'll tell you why. I love the idea of an open, an open box, like say for instance, 1989 Upper Deck, uh, to have been certified by BBC Exchange as having been from a case that was sealed. Because what happens is, if the box itself isn't sealed, then somebody could have rifled through the packs with the knowledge of the sequential uh, number order and pull out the pack that will most likely have a Griffey and replace it with another pack. I don't like that. Uh, I, you know, nobody likes that kind of thing. So I want to make sure mine were authenticated from uh, being directly from a sealed case. So I kind of narrowed it down, you know, 80 to 92, basically one box of everything, just wax, no leaf or OPG, uh, no racks, no cellos, and that was just kind of for my collection. So uh, I ended up doing that. I've got most of them that I need, and some some that are uh, some boxes FASC are just like non-existent. So I don't think I'll be able to see all of them, and that's okay. I was able to just kind of stick with authentic, authenticated, bo authenticated boxes of uh, 84 FLIR, 85 FLIR. I think I'm still looking for an A3 tops. Uh, wax from uh, from a sealed case and maybe a few of the uh, newer ones are like really not worth anything all that much you know but uh, anyways I love those boxes I love the artwork and uh, it just reminds me so much of uh, of my childhood and um, it's so to me those boxes from the 80s mean way more than the actual cards themselves like for instance uh, a box of like 1989 tops I just I, uh, I drool over uh, those boxes and the artwork. Uh, now, if I had a pile of 89 tops on my desk, not so much. I'd say, I gotta get this stuff out of here. <laughs> so the boxes themselves are great display pieces. I enjoy them so much. So that's why I decided to go into collecting those. Um, as far as pre-war stuff, all graded, um, all low graded, we're talking authentic, altered through like two for the most part. Some three, some fours, but mostly authentic through two, provided they have nice centering and seldom ever have creasing and have fantastic eye appeal. So for me, great advantage of key, key, key guys like Ty Cobb, Honest Wagner, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, all these guys, I love them in super low grades. But ideally for me uh, is if they have some back damage. I never look at the backs, so I'm super excited to get something in low grade that looks great on the front, but not necessarily on the back. So my 48 leaf Jackie Robinson rookie, for example, um, great, great card. The uh, front is very presentable. The back has, uh, has some paper loss and that just has my name all over it. So, uh, but it took a while, it took a while for me to kind of uh, drill down and see exactly what I wanted to do with my collection. And so I, now I'm kind of firing on all cylinders. I know exactly what I want. And it didn't cost me an arm and a leg uh, to figure it out. Like I didn't lose my shirt because I bought these right. Um, and so I've, uh, I've sold a bunch of uh, uh, other 19th century cards. And I'll give you an example as well. I uh, picked up this, uh, this uh, 1887 Allen and Ginter uh, complete set, all graded by SGC. All of them graded one, but the, the fronts were pack fresh beautiful the problems were, were, were back then what they would do is they would uh, glue them in albums so uh, each one of them had problems with uh, paper loss on the back well I mean that those are fantastic I love those so what I did was out of the 50 card set I ended up purchasing a suitcase very, very nice looking suitcase you, if you look on my website in some of the blog uh, posts like maybe earlier this year you'll see them the set is just amazing uh, 50 subjects uh, there's only 10 baseball players so what I did was I ended up selling all 40 of everybody else including the suitcase and kept to the baseball uh, so um, it was kind of a kind of a fun thing to do but when you do that you really got to make sure you know your numbers uh, because it was a very costly 
purchase. And what I wanted to make sure of is I wanted to make sure that I could, uh, within the purchase price of it, um, I wanted to make sure that I could sell the non-baseball and keep the baseball but only if whenever I sold the baseball that I could make a little bit of money off of it afterwards. So I did a really good job on that. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm really pleased with the, with how that came out. And plus I don't have like this massive suitcase on my, uh, on my uh, display table anymore. I do have the 10, which are exactly what I want to keep. So, you know, sometimes you have to do that as well. You pick up big collections or sets, um, and you know, it kind of requires you to get rid of part of it, uh, in order to, uh, get some, uh, cash back out of it and uh, for the set to make or for the cards to make sense to be in your collection and that's okay because uh, cards are like super easy to get get in and out of as far as buying and selling goes they're easily uh, liquidable liquid liquidatable I don't know <laughs> they're they're easy to be bought and sold provided you buy at the right price and you sell at the right price so um, just a couple ideas I had for you this Saturday afternoon Hope everybody's doing well over there, um, wherever you are right now. And uh, it does look like I better get, be getting home because I might be uh, might be poured on pretty soon here. So uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on collecting or baseball cards in general. Uh, you can reach me out. Uh, reach me at uh, Twitter, at TanManBBFan, uh, and uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash TanManBaseballFan. Email tamemanbaseballfan@gmail.com, website tamemanbaseballfan.com, and uh, don't forget to check out my book. It is on sale for nine ninety five, and for Prime, Amazon Prime uh, members, it's uh, free shipping. And the name of it is Confessions of a Baseball Card Addict. Thank you guys. Have a fantastically terrific weekend.